Good morning, Tracy. Hey, Roy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing okay. Wondering how many people will end up getting today. <laughs> That's a good question. I will. Was wondering, was wondering whether we should have canceled this one too or not, since people are seem to still be out this week. But we'll find out. Well, we we've already not had two meetings. Yep. So, so I, I'd really rather not. So I'm I'm gonna pause recording. All right, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first meeting of 2022. Um, let's hope this year is a good year for us all. Uh, as you all know, uh, to be part of this meeting, you have to abide by the antitrust policy notice, which is being displayed on the screen, as well as the code of conduct. Um, neither of these things are new to anybody on this call, as you've all been on this call before. So uh, with that, um, we have the standard announcement, uh, which is the Dev Weekly newsletter that goes out uh, tomorrow. So if there's anything that you would like to add to that, uh, please feel free to edit the wiki page, add a comment, or uh, just I'll let anybody know that you want something added to that and we can get that information added. Um, we did get two quarterly reports in this time, one for URSA and one for BASU. Uh, when I checked this morning, we were under half um, review for those, for both of those. So um, if you haven't had an opportunity to look at those, please do so. I did not see any uh, outstanding questions from either the projects or from anybody in the TSC. Um, but if there are any questions about those, now would be the time to, to ask those. All right, not seeing any hands. I don't think there's any questions. Um, I will note that uh, we do have some uh, project reports that are overdue. If you happen to speak to anybody in those projects, um, let them know uh, that they're overdue, as well as Dano will be reaching out and, and having a conversation or trying to get somebody to um, respond to, to comments about the fact that we need those project reports. All right, and we have three uh, upcoming project reports, uh, two for next week, one for the following week that I have included there on the agenda. Uh, so the next thing that we have is uh, related to Borough, um, Hyperledger Borough. We, uh, Daniela did reach out for us and uh, talk to Casey um, about the status of Hyperledger Borough. He did come back and uh, recommend that we move that um, project to a dormant state. I also got back an email from Silas um, just a few days ago, a couple days ago, um, that he will also be pro uh, providing a, uh, an update next week when he returns from the holidays uh, with some additional remarks about kind of the state of the maintenance of Hyperledger Borough going forward. Um, but I just wanted to let everybody know that we did get uh, the recommendation uh, for moving Borough to dormant from Casey and I uh, wanted to put that as a decision point for us uh, to officially uh, move that to dormant. So any questions or comments on that? So hi, Tracy, this is Arno. Uh, hi, Arno. Just to clarify, so Silas is aware that uh, Casey suggested we move that to dormant. He's not opposed to it, right? Uh, that's correct. He responded to the email um, that had Casey's original response okay. in it. Uh, yeah, he didn't. So he didn't. On the same he didn't page. say like, no, no, don't don't move it. It was just, uh, hey, I'll provide some additional uh, color insight into what we're going to do with maintenance going forward uh, when I return next week. All right, sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Arun? Tracy, I saw that you reached out to a couple of project teams, Fabric and Sawtooth to be specific, and asking them to um, 
know the status. I know what sort of people responded, but did you hear back from Sweta or, or somebody else on the fabric side? I, I did not hear back anything. I put the, a question out on the Fabric EVM chat channel uh, asking if this EVM chain code was still supported, um, but I have not heard anything back. Does anybody on the call know if we're still supporting the EVM chain code? I think the plan is to retire that one, or um, I don't know if dormant's the right state for a repo or sub repo, but that's the idea with that one. Okay. Okay. In fact, I asked uh, Chris Ferris was one of the initiators of that one and one of the few maintainers of that project remaining. So I asked him if he could archive that. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, comments about this before we take it to an official vote? Angela? Yeah, Tracy, uh, first of all, Happy New Year. And just for the records, I really like the borough. I'm sorry that they go to, to dormant, but uh, I really like that, that project, yeah, just for the record. Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks, Angelo. This is our, um, our first real move into the Ethereum space. So um, it's it's sad uh, to see that wanting to go to dormant, but maybe at some point in the future, somebody will pick it up or um, move forward with it. Tom Lesh. So uh, Tracy, just one thing. Uh, first of all, happy new year to everyone. So. <clears throat> So when we put this project to dormant states, so I think uh, we should not, I think Hyperledger should not do the marketing about like this project is now went to the dormant status because there are there are many uh, kind of uh, marketing agency who can use this kind of news and can maybe spread the wrong about like Hyperledger now uh, kind of dormant and kind of deactivating the particular projects. So what about the Hyperledger about I, as a hyperledger is talk about this project. They're going to market about it or they're going to just, it will be the internet of the hyperledger only. Yeah, so I know I know when we moved Quilt to Dormant, um, what was it last year? Uh, you know, it, it was pretty much a silent sort of move, right? Obviously not silent in the TSC, we, we did discuss it here, but um, that, that was the extent of it, right? Um, there was no sort of, announcement saying, hey, Hyperledger Quilts or Hyperledger Quilts moved to dormant state. There won't be any sort of thing like that either. Okay, yeah. All right, any other questions or comments? Or does somebody want to officially make this a motion? So I'll be happy to make a motion, but uh, I wanted to follow up on what uh, Cameron just said. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think there is an easy defense to anybody who tries to twist that into you know some negative news about Hyperledger. We ought to be able to say, no, this is just, you know, we have this philosophy of having this kind of greenhouse where we have projects that are being, you know, brought in, we give them a chance and it's normal, you know, it's, it's, good governance for us to also recognize when some projects are not going to last any longer and we are retiring them. So I don't think we should, I, I mean, I'm not saying we should make a press release about it either, but I don't think we should be, you know, embarrassed about it or be shy about these things. We ought to be able to take a very firm stand on the fact that this is normal part of, you know, the project life cycle. Yeah, I agree with that, Daniela. Oh, I was going to raise my hand. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I agree with Arno's uh, comments, and and maybe it's a good opportunity in the new year to also um, bring forward the the actual governance and what the status is and what is incubated versus active. Because I think you know everybody here on the phone knows, or I hope everybody here on the phone knows, but I think a lot of people as they come into Hyperledger um, don't understand what that is. So maybe it would be worth our while to take you know, use this as a reason to, you know, maybe do a blog post around the governance and why it's important and um, 
and how um, we see this as as you know good governance and healthy uh, project you know project developments as well. Um, and I think that would be a, a, a great blog post. Uh, you know, Tracy, we can help you, or if somebody else wants to raise their hand to do it on the TSC um, to put forward and, and have as a reference material. Yeah, sounds good. So again, yeah. I'm happy to move for the uh, motion to move Borough to Dolman State. Okay. Any oh, seconds? Second. All right. Thanks, Hart. All right, so I don't think we need a roll call here. Um, so, Rai, if you just want to give us a yay, nay sort of vote. Uh, in the uh, matter before the Technical Steering Committee, uh, who votes yay? Yay. 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 <laughs> Does anyone uh, abstain from voting on the matter? Do we have any nays? The eyes have it. The eyes have it. All right. Thanks, Rai. Um, OK, so then the, the other matter before us really is talking through the, um, the issue that I raised in the TSC around projects who have not submitted their TSC quarterly project update um will be moved to dormant state after a tc vote uh so there has been a lot of comments on this particular github issue already um, but i did want to bring it specifically to the tsc and and to our meeting here so we can have a a wider discussion if anybody um, has any specific thoughts they'd like to bring up um, now would be the time to to have that discussion so i think um before we get to the discussion Rai, if you wouldn't mind just opening up that issue so that we can see it on the screen um, as far as what it's been uh, written up as. Um, so I have done a few edits based on things that people have brought up, um, but specifically um, the idea here is that if a project misses their quarterly project update, uh, we first go through the process of having the, the TSC vice chair reach out to those projects to remind them that their report is due. Um, Dano has been reaching out specifically using these mechanisms that I've listed, which is reaching out directly to the last person who submitted the project quarterly update. Uh, if he doesn't get a response, he reaches out to both the project mailing list and the official chat channel. Um, and then the idea here is that if for some reason he's unable to reach someone in the project and an entire quarter goes by since we've uh, seen a report from the project, then the TSC would discuss and determine if there should be a vote on moving that project to a dormant state. So questions, comments, any discussion that we'd like to have? Sure. So I guess my first question would be, is Dormant State the only uh, state that we are looking to move this project directly into? Or can we consider, a, let's say, an intermediary state that says, hey, this nobody from this particular project is responding, but probably eventually community will oversee it and move it to Dormant State. But for now, we're just awaiting response. Yeah, so um, I specifically used the dormant state as that was a state we introduced last year. Um, and it seemed like the the right phrasing, if you will. I think we spoke uh, quite a bit last year when we were thinking about what the right term was for this particular state. Um, dormant seemed to be uh, the right idea, but happy to see if anybody else has any different ideas or thoughts about whether we should add a new state. So um, since I still have my hand raised, sorry, I'll, I'll sure. probably pitch in that pitch that in with additional idea. Um, so we are considering the, the, the uh, current problem that is projects not submitting the quarterly reports. But 
maybe in, uh, we have certain other cases where let's say uh, some of these projects were not responding let's say a new labs has been set up and we recommended that particular labs project to reach out to existing projects and see if there is any collaboration and they being a newcomers into the community they tried reaching out to these projects however they did not get a response from from these existing projects that could be another case which i am anticipating could occur um so maybe that calls us for a for a case where we say hey this particular project maintainers are not responding to multiple requests irrespective of whether it's the tsc reaching out to them or it's any other community members reaching out to them so yeah that's that's all i want to back up that my initial thoughts with Thank okay. you. Thanks, Arun. Arun? Uh, a couple of thoughts. I mean, on the labs itself, I don't think we should put the labs in the mix here because they are officially not under the governance of the TSC per se. And I think, you know, historically, the stu lab stewards have dealt with those issues, situations where we just say, okay, it seems like nobody is alive here, not responding, and we just archive it. And, and we're pretty, I mean, thanks to Rai, I have to say, we're pretty responsive at resurrecting those if somebody comes back and say, no, no, actually, I mean to keep working on this. So so I, I, I don't think labs are concerning. When it comes to the projects themselves, you know, I'm happy that we just had this resolution for borough. I think everybody would like, it, would like this kind of outcome better where there is actually agreement and discussions that has happened where there's no, you know, it's not a contentious, uh, 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 a conflicting situation where the TST unilaterally says, well, we're not heard from them, so screw it. We just, you know, move them to dormant. And I hope this, we never have to do this really, because this is really an unfortunate situation. I do like the original proposal because I think it doesn't force anything. It just says, hey, this is the mechanism we'll will use if it comes to this. And there's all these like different milestones where you're really trying to reach out. And it's really the worst case scenario where we say, well, we just can't get any answers and, and then we will have to make a decision. And it doesn't even say, we'll automatically move the project to dorm. And it just says the TSC will really have to have a you know, hard look at this and make a decision. So I think this is all we need. I, I wouldn't want to make you know, no offense to Arun. I, I can see the logic in Arun's counter proposal to add another state. I think it just makes things more complicated and necessary for something that ought to be a very corner edge case. It's hopefully something we'll never really face. Okay, thanks, Arno. I Just to clarify on, on the one point about labs, I agree labs shouldn't be part of this, but I think what Arun was trying to get to was the place where uh, if it, if we told if the lab stewards told the lab to reach out to an existing project and then that project didn't respond to that lab um, is is I think what he was trying to get to, which I, I think is a valid sort of point. Ah uh, yes, okay, thanks for the clarification. I missed that. Yeah, no worries. I originally when uh, Arun said labs, my brain went there to you. Um, and then I was like, oh wait, okay, I get, I get what you're trying to say, Arun. Um, so I just want to make sure that uh, you got that as well. Um, Hart, yeah, your turn. Good. So I think we should also try to address some of the core issues around this. So just poking around, right? It looks like say Caliper is pretty active even though their quarterly report is like, you know, a month overdue or something, right? I mean, they had, just looking that, you know, somebody mer was merged pull requests two days ago. So, you know, it, it, it's clear that, you know, people are people are still working, the project isn't dead. They're just not doing the quarterly reports. And I think for some of these smaller projects, you know, you get people that say like, you know, it, it, it's just not a priority for people. They don't really see the benefit of doing the quarterly report or doing much or doing it on time. Um, and so they just tend to like do it halfway or just 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 kind of ignore it, right? Um, so I think you know obviously for bigger projects this is this is much less of an issue. There's going to be somebody that that can do this. Um, 
So I'm wondering if, if there's a way we can sort of attack in the other direction rather than, you know, just saying like, you must do your quarterly reports and attacking with, you know, sort of the big stick, we can either give some kind of carrots for quarterly reports or, or make quarterly reports easy to do. Um, so, so I don't know how we can, you know, give carrots or incentivize people to do quarterly reports. Um, but, you know, maybe some like attention from the TSC or maybe, you know, you can get stuff from your like accomplishments from the quarterly report featured on a blog or something. I'm not sure. I also think some of the stuff on the quarterly reports, it would be great if we could automate in the long run just to, to make things easier. Like there's no reason why we can't pull like the contributors or the, well, no reason in theory anyway, but we can't pull all the, the contribution statistics from LFX um, or something like that. So uh, it, it, that might be a lot of work, but you know, maybe in the long run, we can think about doing that. So I guess, uh, what do people think about all of this? Yeah, thanks, Hart. Uh, just uh, I'll comment uh, before anybody else raises their hand. Um, I I think that there's there's a reason that we introduce quarterly reports, and maybe that reason isn't obvious to everybody involved um, in the, in the projects as to why they're doing the quarterly reports. Um, I also would comment on the fact that I actually take those quarterly reports. Um, there's two things that happen with those quarterly reports. Um, one is that I share them on a quarterly basis with the governing board. I'm, I'm sorry, on a monthly basis with the governing board as to which ones were submitted. Um, and I also pull out the interesting sorts of facts from them. Um, and so I use those in the, the governing board reports every month uh, to let them know kind of what the projects are up to and the interesting things that they've been doing. Um, and I have also used a lot of the information from those quarterly reports for like the member summit when I gave the member summit update on the projects. Uh, those quarterly reports were great um, to figure out what was happening specifically in the projects. Um, I use those internally within Accenture to share what's happening on different projects um, that might be of interest to, to people within Accenture. Um, you know, I use these more than I think people realize. And so I think if and when we do this blog post, Daniela, um, on the governance, I think it's also maybe a place where we can highlight the usefulness of these project reports and, and why they um, why they bring value and why projects would want to do those. Um, and maybe that's just a discussion that we have to have broader with, with the projects. Um, but for me, um, I, I wouldn't know what was going on with some of these projects if we didn't have these project reports. Um, so I'll stop because Hart, obviously something I said made you raise your hand again. So I'll let you go. No, I was just saying, I think I agree with you. And um, I, I think the the key point that you said was that the projects aren't aware that this is happening, right? Mm -hmm. um, so from their end, it's it's just particularly a, a small, the, the big focus here is small projects that are not connected to the TSC, that don't have TSC representation. Um, and, and these, and to them, these quarterly reports are just kind of like a black hole, right? They see the input and, and, and they don't see a lot, uh, a lot coming out of it. So I think um, I think emphasizing what you said to the small projects would, you know, to these projects that are are you know, still active but not necessarily uh, on time on their quarterly reports would be fantastic, and I think this would be you know that this would encourage people to be more on time on these, and to your other point, um, we you know you were there for this. Uh, but we actually introduced the quarterly reports because we used to have people do them live at the TSC meeting. Uh, and this just became too much of a burden on actually the TSC because all of the meetings were dominated by, uh, by people giving their quarterly report talks. And it wasn't a problem that people didn't want to give them. Generally, people wanted to like, they wanted to talk about their project in front of the TSC and, and they spent too much time 
Uh, and that was the problem. And I, Arno, I'm sure remembers this as well. Um, so maybe, maybe we can also give some of these projects uh, a little bit of, we can say, hey, your quarterly report is late. You know, uh, if, if you're worried about, you know, impact of the TSC not seeing it, do you want to talk, do you want to give it verbally in front of the TSC? And obviously this isn't a sustainable thing that we can do for every project every time, uh, but, but maybe it could help uh, connect some of these projects back to the, the TSC. Thanks for listening. Sorry for the long talk. No problem. Thanks, Hart. Any other thoughts or comments? I've, I've kind of heard two different things. One, we like this. And two, we're not sure this is the right thing. So um like to hear some other people and their thoughts on the issue at hand. Nathan? It's important to emphasize for the record, we're not trying to make these reports hard. Um, if they're overburdensome or if there's data that's not applicable to your project or if there's something about doing a quarterly report that's really, really difficult, you know, you could even use your quarterly report to tell us about that too. Um, and you know, the, the idea is that we are trying to gather enough information that we can support your project. We want to be able to, to brag about the good things that you're doing, find you help, um, make connections with other partner companies and organizations who are working in other areas in Hyperledger so, so that they can understand why your, your project's interesting and hopefully get involved. So um, if someone's feeling like this is a bunch of busy work and it's not making any difference, um, let's have a conversation about how it can make a better difference and what more what what different kind of data we might put in the report to make it better for you. Um, that, that, that's always fair game. And, but the template is not fixed or static enough that I think that that's a problem. I haven't heard complaints around, um, you know, it, it's just too hard to find time. I think the other than there's just a lot of other things going on and people have a lot of competing priorities. So um, I, I think that this uh, effort to follow up and formalizing some of the follow up around it um, will help us to, to avoid kind of that limbo of, we haven't heard from a project and we're not sure what to do. Um, it'll give us kind of some specific action steps as a TSC that we can take um, to keep everything straight and to do our due diligence around governance like Arno was telling us about before. Thanks, Nathan. Bobby? Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I know that the Learning Materials Working Group, every time I get a quarterly report, I update the resource library for each one of the projects. Um, and when new people, new developers come in and they say, I don't know where to get started, I send them there and I say, look at the summary of what's been going on in each one of these projects. Look how many developers are coming in or going out and make your decision based on that information. So it does, like the metadata from that helps newcomers figure out what projects they want to jump in on. And that could be a carrot for these people who or for the groups that aren't um, seeing the value in that, um, saying that's one of the first things the newcomers are looking at is how active is your project? That's a good point, Bobby. Hart? Oh, I, other people can go first. Okay, Jim. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, sorry for joining late. Uh, so apologize if this has already been uh, brought up earlier. Um, I felt like, um, the quality report uh, definitely gives TSC a view to how pro each project is doing, but I thought it, it's also a, a, a mechanism for uh, periodical um, evaluation of how each project might need, might, may or may not need help uh, from TSC's point of view. Um, I wonder if the burden can be shifted a little bit if we can produce every re, uh, report, not requiring the uh, the team to do that, but every report comes with default content since we have those great um, uh, project health status dashboards that I think each report just basically ended up uh, including anyway. If we can say, well, every report uh, will be generated on certain uh, time, um, it can be the time that we, we, we currently require them to be produced. 
uh, and they by default come with the you know the information from the dashboard that shows I think a lot of information about the the healthiness of of the project already, and then every project owner is is welcome to add more details, more color to you know just the numbers. But I think the number themselves tells a great story about how each project is doing. Um, don't want to add more work to anybody's plate. I don't know if there's there's a good way to have those be generated with that default content by default. Uh, and then you know every project owner can accept what's what's there by default or they can add more to it. Yeah, so um Arno, I'm gonna jump in here before I call you um, because I'd like to respond to, to Jim's comment here. Uh, I think that there is information now that we didn't have when these project reports were originally created, right? Uh, and I think that information is useful. However, I would also say that a lot of the words that people use uh, are useful as well, right? About the, the specific things that we can't see via numbers, right? These are the new features that were added in the last month or these are the things that are um, going well, these are the things that are going bad. And I, I don't think you can necessarily get that information from analytics. Um, but at the same point, I do agree that there's probably stuff in that project report template that maybe doesn't have to be there anymore now that we do have the analytics tool. Jim, yeah, I uh, yeah if here, I so. can think Take a minute to respond to that, Tracy. Um, I, I think we're kind of agreeing that we should utilize the dashboard more sort of as the, a baseline of evaluating. If a project is very active, clearly pushing more code and having discussions, even if they have nothing in the quarterly reports, I think we should feel happy, right? It's, it shouldn't be a concern to anybody. It's only when it's silent over there. It's silent on the on the report content in terms of words. That's when we should get concerned. I just feel like if we did this, then it takes a lot of sort of confusion and complaints of too much work out of the equation. Mm. Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, Arno. Yeah, I you know on that very point first, I would say quickly that I I agree with your view, Tracy, which is. I think you know we are leveraging the dashboard. We're asking people to put a link to the last quarter so that people have an easy access to this data. But I think the intent, at least, was to go beyond what's available. You know that's been can be gathered automatically, and and in a way that only a human being can really convey. But uh, maybe Jim has a, a point where we and it, it kind of you know goes it's in line with what Nathan was touching on earlier, which is maybe at this point we could, you know, uh, better communicate what we expect from, from this, this form, this report, and maybe lighten up even the, 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 the structure. And, you know, so that it, the effort to fill them out in the case where there is no issue becomes much lighter. But I also wanted to bounce initially to uh, back on, on this, Topic you were you were explaining very interesting you know use cases for those reports all the use you make out of them and Bobby also highlighted how she uses that and so I think maybe out of this we should take you know what I, I'm thinking is we should make an effort to try to capture you know the 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 use of those reports and so that we can communicate that to the projects because I agree with what I said earlier that. I suspect pro most projects don't even understand how much you know uh, you, how useful this is, and and I don't think we do a very good job necessarily explaining why we are having uh, why we are asking them to fill out those reports, and if they saw the value, maybe they would be more you know inclined to making the little effort we're asking them to fill out those reports. Yeah, yeah, good point, Arno. Uh, Rai, your hand is virtually up. Yeah, my hand is virtually up. Um, so I agree. I think that's a good way to go. Um, I, I do want to point out that the uh, the data in Insights is not static. 
and you can change history. So if we're going to generate one, I just asked that the TSC, uh, it should be a static thing that they're pointing to, not like a URL within LFX, uh, because you can change history. And uh, that's, that's all I got. Uh, Rai, can I can I ask a follow up to the changing history? How do you change history? Uh, I will give you an example that will happen uh, later today. Uh, mm -hmm. I just transferred a repo in from BC Gov for Aries. Mm -hmm. um, so the contribution data for this quarter uh, and all quarters preceding it will have will be recalculated once that repo is those contributions are taken in. So they're going to change. And if we archive a repo. Uh, those contributions will retroactively change as well. Okay. Yeah, understood. Makes sense. Thanks, Ry. Uh, Hart. Thanks, Tracy. So I just wanted to essentially agree with what Arno said um, just a second ago. And I also want to point out that I think we have sort of two different problems with quarterly reports. There are projects that are seemingly inactive that are not submitting their quarterly reports on time. And obviously these projects we should consider for dormancy, but there are also projects that are seemingly active that are lazy about submitting their quarterly reports. And probably discussion for dormancy is, is not really right for these projects, right? We could just look at them and say like, well, people are, are still working pretty hard on this. They're just not submitting their quarterly reports. Yes, uh, just thinking about that. Um, in the in the case of the projects that are uh, not responding, not providing a project report, uh, I'm just trying to rephrase what I think I heard. There's two different reasons that they might not be doing that. One, they truly might not be active, and and two, they might be active, but they just don't see the need to fill out the project report. Um, in the, the former case, we need to do something about that. In the latter case, uh, we need to still get information from those active projects about interesting things that we might be able to share with a, a wider community. Uh, and we need to figure out a way to do that. Did I, did I capture that correctly, Art, what you were trying to say? Yes, thank you, okay. that was great. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. So. No, no, no. Yeah, I just wanted <laughs> uh, to point out that these two problems have potentially two different solutions, definitely. which is what you yeah. summarized perfectly. So thank yeah. you. Okay, um, thanks, Hart. Nathan? Well, and I, I, just to add to that, often there's something we can do to help when that's the case. Like maybe someone who's handling a lot of the administrative work has transitioned on to a different role or job, or you know maybe they need help with... Um, nominating a new maintainer, for example, because if the core maintainer who was doing all the reports moves on, it may be that the project is still perfectly active, but not all the roles and responsibilities of the former maintainer, you know, were passed on or handed over to someone else. So, you know, there's often something we, that's fairly easy and straightforward we can do as TSC to help and support with that um, in terms of, you know, helping them find new maintainers or making sure that some of those responsibilities are passed on to someone who can help and support. So, uh, I think it's worth calling that out, uh, that the, the dormancy is not the only outcome here. Um, the, 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 we're really telling the TSC as a whole, we need to go look at this. We need to figure out what we can do better. Yep, yep, make, definitely makes sense. Uh, David. Well, to build on that about responsibilities and making sure they're handed off. I mean, I've seen situations where new people come into a project and they're just not aware of their responsibilities. I mean, I don't think we need to assume that a maintainer necessarily knows that they need to do the report and just chooses not to. I suspect there are new maintainers who don't even realize this is necessarily a thing. There's no real official maintainer onboarding, so to speak, right? So maybe there is more we can do to notice when a new maintainer shows up and reach out and make sure that we have a conversation with them. Because I've seen other situations where new people show up and they're not necessarily aware of existing community calls, for example, or other things that maybe we would hope that they were aware of. Yep. 
Uh, that's a good point too, David. Um, is there something that we can be doing to document some of the responsibilities um, that might exist out there that people are not aware of? And in theory, if I knew if, and I don't know if Insights could do this, but in theory, if it could, if we had a list of all the new maintainers who showed up in a given time period, you know, I could reach out to them and say, hey, do you want to have an onboarding? But, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think that's really been happening right now. I think the onboarding, if it exists, has been very informal. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hart, I saw your hand go up and then back down. Anything? Oh, sure. I was just going to comment that it seems like the reminders were particularly erratic recently. Um, I don't know what, what was up with that, but. I did go through and change uh, a bunch of the, the meetings when I was rescheduling stuff for this year to kind of spread out. We had a bunch of them that were happening all at once and we had some new projects. So I, I was reshuffling them. It's possible that I uh, didn't get all the invites exactly correctly set up with the, the, the proper reminders. So I will go back and look at the uh, project calendars and make sure that those are set up correctly. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, uh, anything else? I, I've i heard um, a couple things that I think are action items uh, that we need to take as a TC. Um, one is that we probably need to review the project report template and determine what is still useful to have, uh, what is not useful to have in there, um, as well as uh, writing up uh, some wiki page or some blog post uh, that talks about why a project reports are important, right? How are they used beyond just the, hey, you wrote it, we read it, that was the end of it, right? Um, <laughs> So I, I think those are the two action items. Um, specifically for this particular issue, I think there's still value in it for um, the projects that are truly inactive, right? That they're not writing a report because there's nobody there to write a report and there's nothing that's happening on those projects. Um, however, as has been stated, right? There are the cases where um, we want to try and figure out how to make this an easier process for um, projects that are active uh, and that this doesn't seem like a um, a hassle, right? Uh, a struggle, a, um, a complex sort of thing to for them to do on a quarterly basis. Um, and I think, you know, the two action items will help in that regard. So uh, anything else that we should talk about specifically for this issue? Um, is there anybody who wants to volunteer for, for maybe reviewing the project report template coming up with an alternative for suggestions for changes um, as we go forward. Um, I'm happy to write up the information on why the, the project reports are important. Tracy, I can help take a look at the, the, the template itself to see if we can include a um, section that has the, has the stats captured somehow. Okay, that'd be great, Jim. And also, if there's if there's things in there that we think are no longer really valid, right? To to have uh, somebody manually go and ask, um, you know, those are things we can take a look at, you know, updating the template as well. All right, any, um, any other comments, any questions, anything that is not related to this that we should be talking about as this new year starts? Everybody's got their fingers crossed that Tracy's gonna say they can go now. Everybody's keeping very quiet in order to make that happen. Tracy, we're expecting a closing monologue. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs>
All right. Um, so there's nothing else. Um, Jim, you know, uh, we'll hopefully have uh, the opportunity in the next week for you to, to go through and take a look and make some suggestions and hopefully get you on the, the report next week um, or on the, the agenda next week. And then I will also um, start to write up the information on why a project report is important. So we can take a look at that and see if there's other things we'd like to add to it. Uh, with that, I am going to close the meeting. That was a good closing monologue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. All Thank right. You. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. <laughs>